Well, welcome to part two of the uh, Paradigm Alliance, or is it a, no, the Alliance Paradigm uh, solar install. Today, we're working on the solar and wrapping up a couple of other loose ends that we got to do to make the system functional. So uh, stick around, follow along, maybe even subscribe, leave a comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. What could I do better? I'm always looking to get better. All right, let's uh, take a look at how we're laying the panels out. And it's still windy, yes. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, quick review. There's a solar port underneath that panel there. That's the factory one. We'll take a look at that here in a bit. Uh, I ran a second set of conductors up here to uh, this area. This is up the gray tank vent. Whoop. We're gonna have these four panels, I think, on this array. And then all those six panels there Wait, are we missing one? No, no, okay, yeah, we got six. Uh, those six panels on the back array. The advantage to running two arrays, if you don't know, is uh, we could have shade on this half and full sun here, and this controller is gonna be working at its optimum, just perfect. And that one's gonna be doing the best it can. Or the opposite could be true, or this one's got shade, and then that one's gonna be cooking. And furthermore, to try and deal with the self-shading on these RVs, what we like to do is try and pair as many of the panels on one side together. So uh, what that means is we would run, let's say hypothetically, here's what I'd probably end up doing. I'd run these two panels together because they are in a similar situation. Probably not gonna be shaded all that often, okay? then I'd run those two together because they are gonna be a similar situation. If the sun is over here, right, the shadow is gonna go over here on both those panels and knock the, the output of those down. And when we run all of these two sets in, or sorry, these three sets in this case, uh, in parallel, it works out just fine. So let's think about that situation again. The sun is over here, okay? These ones, uh, not doing so hot. These ones over here, they are cooking. And then these ones here, they're going to be doing great too. So these panels are going to contribute as much as they can. They're going to contribute as much as they can. And these ones, they're going to contribute so-so. Uh, but the controller is going to be okay with it because those sets, the series pairs, are in parallel groups. I know it might sound confusing. It makes sense to me. If it doesn't, it makes sense to you. Tell me in the comments down below what specifically is confusing about it, and maybe I'll try and put together a more specific video on how to address it, how about that? And then over here, uh, same thing, I'll probably put these two in series, and then those two up there in series. Uh, let's talk about some other methodology on the why, because there's a couple of room, couple of uh, open spaces here that these could be arranged in different configurations. I want to have some room here for uh, the air conditioner maintenance, especially because I just put soft starts on these. I knew exactly the position I had to put my body in to work on them. So if I had to work on it again, this is what I would want up here. Likewise, this is what I would want here because the access panel for the soft starts and all that stuff is on this side of the air conditioner. Over here, we're kind of going to be screwed. It's not going to be that bad. Still be able to work on it. You just got to use, use your head. A lot of us dads like to say, you just got to, you know, put your thinking cap on. You just got to go slow, take your time. Probably won't break anything. Probably. All right, enough of me talking. Uh, step one, what I usually do is wire them all up first. Test it, make sure it's all working. Then I screw them down because that is smart. Er. All right, so hopefully nothing looks a whole lot different because that means I didn't have to change much. But I do have everything wired up right now. And uh, only one charger is connected. I got to uh, figure out the polarity on this one. And uh, let's talk about that one, shall we? Uh, I've had a number of comments because uh, this is actually Saturday and I may put the video out today where people have been saying that actually is a uh, that is a channel to pass things down through and it kind of makes sense because that's the utility area right straight down there but what had me fooled and I'll show you down below we'll take a look here is well 
I don't know for sure, but a, a previous, another owner, a commenter said, I have the exact same, or I think a very similar, uh, fifth wheel. And they're like, yeah, no, no, no. That's the, that's the, uh, that's a solar port or it'll go right down to the bay. You know what I'm trying to say? I've just never run across that. And I saw where the gray tank went to, and it went to here, went straight up. And there's a, uh, the black tank went further over this way, or the vent did. And so I assumed. And we all know what happens when we assume, don't we? Let's take a look here. This is straight down, about where that area would be. And here's what I've been seeing. We got that one there. I thought, well, actually that looks like that may be a shower drain. All right, I think I see where that pipe comes down, but it goes right into the water heater, which looks kind of weird. I guess it's, I could totally see using that one over the gray tank that we did here. I gotta seal that up yet, don't worry, I'll do that. We've done this a ton of times, I'm not worried about it, it'll be fine. Um, I could totally see doing that one in the future, I just have to put a hole in there somehow. Huh. No, I have to thank the commenters. Thank you very much, very much. Uh, I don't know that, well, it certainly wasn't obvious. It's still not 100% obvious to me, but some of the commenters have said that uh, this is available on the on the website. Uh, what did someone say? It's the one of the customer first features. And maybe it's just that so many of the RV manufacturers are not customer first and they don't give me any information that I can really use. You know, I try and figure out what's the uh, VOC on a solar panel. Half the time I gotta ask an AI chatbot and it's right half the time uh, because you can't really figure it out. It comes to all that technical specification type stuff, they usually don't show it at all. So just my habit, and this is something I need to improve on, we need to improve on, I'll definitely share this information with JD, that we need to make sure we're uh, asking more questions and maybe consulting the community a little bit more and digging in a little bit more. But there's only so much we can do uh, as installers. We're, I'm finding as we continue to do more and more of this work and we get busier and busier, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a tragedy that we don't have as much time to be involved in the community side of things. We kind of got our heads down and we're working so much. So that's where you come in. And thank you so much for all of you that have commented and continue to help improve these builds in the future. So have I told you thank you enough? Thank you. All right, this is it. It's all done, got everything out. 2000 watts. Not too shabby. I don't think there's a lot of room for a lot more other than uh, putting some in here. I think probably the last time we're going to get a look at this. Enjoy. Take a good, take a good hard long look. Again, I don't know if we talked about this before. So we got uh, one port is under that panel right there, right about where my finger's pointing. And the other one is coming down through here. And again, a lot of people are saying that is a port that could be used as well. And there's a good chance you're right. Probably right, almost entirely, and we'll use it next time. Uh, we just didn't know what we didn't know, so the more we know. All right, so we're getting the uh, Serbo GX touch display screen put in there, and I wanted to show you uh, how we ended up doing that. I think we were talking about maybe putting it here, but I think this is a little bit better, and it made a little bit more sense. And a lot of times it's nice when you're in the kitchen using power, it's nice to be able to glance over here real quick and see if you're you know, on the edge of overloading anything or anything like that. So uh, I wanted to go over how we actually accomplished this. I ended up uh, running a fish tape. Uh, I think it actually came up through here. Yes, it did. And I had to notch that out just a little bit to get the HDMI and USB ends out of that hole. And what was tricky is there's another hole down there and basically there's just a slice in this wall so it's really easy to miss. At first when I was putting the fish tape up here I didn't take this uh, drawer out and I kept it kept hitting up here and I was like what's going on? So anyway that's what I did. And then uh, back there that is into the main bay and I'll uh, fish the 
HDMI, USB cable, and whatever else, uh, the 6.4 to go into our panel there, all at the same time. Sound good? All right, here it is working. Even got that buttoned up back there again. Uh, no AC in or AC out because the inverters are not currently on, but the solar's cooking pretty good. And uh, yeah, 2,000 watts of solar, so that's about 10% on a day like today. That's pretty good. All right, been uh, hard at work here. We're closing in on the, on the day. This is how things are looking. I got all the covers off because you know what time it is. We are doing a FLIR thermal test on all this. I've been running a, hey, hold on. <laughs> what is up, bud? Seriously, yeah, I didn't, he, know, he knows that we were talking to our YouTube friends and he says, hey, I want to say hi too. Okay, hey, bear. <laughs> oh. oh, he just needs some down snuggles. That's all right. All right, we got to take a snuggle break and then we'll continue. All right, I got him to chase some of his fur. It looks like he's starting to blow his coat. If anybody uh, with long-haired dog know, knows what that means, you you know what we're in for. Okay, anyway, uh, we are getting ready to do a, oh, we don't need the brights on here. We're getting ready to do a FLIR thermal imaging test on this. I have a uh, heat maker. <laughs> what is that thing called? Space heater. I got a space heater running inside. So uh, both of the multipluses are working. Uh, so let let us take a look inside at uh, how much power it's using. All right, we got uh, 1.6 kilowatt on the space heater. What are we pulling for amps? 64 amps. We get a little help from solar. I'm just letting that do its thing. We don't have a state of charge yet because I want that to hit naturally from charging up and we'll probably plug it into shore here this evening. And realistically, it probably won't be full until the morning. The uh, SOK battery monitors are showing the batteries actually at about 30%. But uh, I like to make sure that this sinks on its own. That way, I know it will do that in the future. That's the little heater we got running. All right, we got to get way back to actually see this. Wow. All right. Uh, do any of you see a difference to what we've seen before? Here's the big thing I see that's different. We've been doing uh, this lately with 12 volt systems and we can always see the wires lighted up in orange at least. But right now, the only spots we see with a little bit of warmth. Oh, interesting, that is warm. Oh, that's, okay, that's a reflection. Some, it's, in, it's good to know on FLIR that reflective things sometimes will pop up, but the only little bits of warmth we're getting is, well, again, that's reflective. 60 degrees there, ambience 51. So really we're just getting the tiniest bit of heat being registered on the battery bank. These batteries, each battery, oh, I'll keep my hand out of there. Each battery is only pulling about seven amps right now. So those, you know, two watt cables are gonna stay very cool. Let's take a look over here. The only hot spot there is what? That LED, I think? The fuse isn't really getting warm. Of course, the servo always runs warm and these MPPTs, of course, they always run warm too. I was actually going to be a little nervous about this guy right here, but so far these are staying nice and cool. Even with these uh, stinky jumpers I gotta replace. Those aren't here yet. And then of course the multipluses, they get a little warm too. Interesting, what are, what are these? Yeah, they got the 60. A little bit of warmth. All right, this has been running for probably 20 minutes or so. So this is one of the safety things we've been doing lately, just to check for everything, because we could only feel so much. We would always feel the connections during a load test, and I really recommend if you're doing your own system like this, really load test it. Beat the snot out of it. Hey, quit chewing on that. Bear. <laughs> Bear's chewing on a power cord. He's like a Minoc. I think that's how you pronounce it, you know, from the Star Wars. Chewing on the power cables. If we get another burner, maybe we'll call him that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put some covers on here now, make this start to look a little bit nicer. And uh, I think 
we're in the home stretch here. Hold on, wait a minute. Uh, I was getting ready to put the Lynx Power In cover on and I noticed one of my lugs here, as you can see, it uh, ooh, it is not on very good. You can see that it was crimped. I don't understand why it's not uh, crimping up properly. So I got uh, I got Pinchy out. We're gonna try and recrimp him and see if it sticks. If not, I might have to grab a different die. I don't know exactly what happened. I tested all the other ones. I really pulled on them, and none of them are coming out. And I don't know exactly what happened, but this is why it's important. Not only to load test, but pull test everything. Well, here we are, look at this. Looking good, huh? Got all our covers on, and the, uh, the motion controlled light is in, and I know we got that one up there, and you know, it's, it's from the factory. It, ah, well that, it, it's so harsh, right? But that, and actually this is the white setting on this, on this uh, LED strip. If we go to blue, it's just, in my mind, it's too blue. The white is pretty blue. And you know, you can go green, red, or no, that's yellow, red, you know, Halloween mode, whatever. But I like, uh, oh, that's pure blue. You could do that if you want. I, I like just the white. I think that looks good. Anyway, uh, we got that all taken care of now. Nice and safe. Just got uh, one more thing I gotta take care of, which is I've got to wrap this in some cable wrap and secure that to the ceiling and then put the cover back on there and vacuum up inside a little bit and then we are done. Look at this, the weather finally decided to cooperate a little bit, huh? Look at this. Look at that bus there. Oh. Oh, I don't get to take that out on the road much anymore these days. All right, all right. Let's get after it here before we lose all light. All right, we got uh, that up there. Looking nice and pretty. And one last look here. Tell you what, that, it's one of the things we like doing is creating a presentation that you're gonna be proud of if you know, you're out camping somewhere or living full time and somebody says, hey, I, don't, I never hear you running a generator. What do you got in there? And you can say, let me show you. That's gotta feel good right there, huh? Thank you for watching this entire video. Uh, if you want something like this done to your rig, check us out at sodasolar.com. Um, we can put this together for you. Um, or if you got questions on it, we can try and help you out. I will say uh, during the summer, we do get pretty busy. And if I don't get back to you in a couple of days or even a week, I'm not ignoring you. I'm not uh, trying to <laughs> give you the cold shoulder. I'm just, I got my focus on the one I'm working on. So be patient, get to you when I can. Feel free to remind me because you know, things do fall through the cracks, but uh, yeah. Again, thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you.